So, uh, yeah, the, I'm Ryan Coleman. This title doesn't make much sense, but you'll figure it out as I go. Uh, so, you know, first to start, you know, no rocket motors or balsa pieces or harm in this report. It's basically purely <laughs> theoretical. So, um, so here's, if there is a problem, a problem statement. This is uh, pre-NARAM participation, pre-NARAM competitors uh, from NARAMs. I started at 37, so I just chose this randomly. That's what I can find quickly. Uh, and you can kind of see maybe there's this beginning of a decline down here. But what this really is in the context, the greater context of is uh, the growth of the NAR. The NAR has grown uh, by over a thousand members in this time, and we don't see uh, any growth in competition. In fact, it might be stagnating. Um, and so I want to think, you know, the, as a member of the contest board and the board of trustees, we're often asked why is this, what can we do to alleviate this problem? Uh, how can we increase more competition? Uh, and first I'll say the real answer is probably uh, to go to the local rate, local sections by great participation, by great leadership. Uh, Randy Bo, we had a great report on this, just how to get your local club involved, how to get them involved in competition. And that bubbles up to the national. But I thought that there might be something that we could try to do top down as well as bottom up. <coughs> uh, and kind of another, an easy symptom you can find uh, is to look at the number of contestants entered in a meet and the number of meets. And you notice this, so to get into a regional meet where you basically the maximum, the way to maximize your uh, pre and air competition points, you have to have 10 competitors. And you can notice there are a few clubs that are fine, they just have a few couple, a few people interested, they fly these smaller meets, but then most of the clubs, they get to 10 and they quit. Um, and I won't even try to say that I'm guiltless of this because I do it too. These are, I ran four meets this year, three of them, we only had 10 official competitors, and one of them we accidentally went to 12. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, this is kind of the minimum that you need, and so that's where we quit recruiting, that's where we quit going out and I'm really encouraging more people to compete. Um, so what, why do we stop at 10? One of the reasons is you have this real diminishing returns as far as the number of competition points. Now obviously I'm not putting in the weighting factor, the contest factor, all the multipliers you put in here. Just the number of competition points you get per entrant uh, levels off really quickly and you start to get these really diminishing returns. So you get your first 10 competitors, you don't only really have a lot of motivation to get the next 10. And, and this is the current NAR scoring system. Moreover, for an individual competitor, you have a negative uh, value to recruiting another competitor. Once you're at 10 competitors, uh, if you do the math, which I tried to do, maybe you messed it up, I think it's right. Um, so let's say, you know, you have, you have me, and I'm just putting the top five people here, A, B, C, D, E. Uh, say they recruit a new contestant and he beats them all. All of them lost points except for the person who only had flight points to begin with. The new guy got a lot of points, your club only got one more point. So you recruited a new competitor, you lost, unless you were the guy at flight points, and your club only got one more point. Uh, say that the competitor beat everybody but the first place person, the first place person is still just as happy, everyone else lost points, and the new guy got points, which is great, maybe they'll keep coming back. But you don't have a lot of motivation for individual competitors to go recruit more people, and under the current NAR system. Uh, and along, about three years ago on the way back from NARAM, Bob Parks told me about this system, which is, uh, the League of Silent Flight, which is an AMA group. And in their scoring system, uh, they, they have a long, complicated scoring system that involves lots of things, but one of the multiplying factors is one plus the number of lower standing competitors, the number of people you beat. And when you do that, you know, notice the scale on this graph goes from 0 to 40, the scale on this graph goes from 0 to 1400. Uh, so if you recruit, you know, your first 10 competitors are getting so many hundred points, at 20 competitors, there's 1,400 points for all to share. And, uh, you know, part of this was I thought this might be too extreme. Uh, that meet with 20 people, they would be getting more points than, like, everybody else in the country for multiple, you know, they would be getting uh, a lot more points to share. Maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. But I also thought maybe we want a little bit less extreme of a version. So I said the log of the number of uh, lower standing contestants. So this just, this just changes this graph from this huge exponential down to something that's it's, uh, a little bit less highly growing. And now you have non-diminishing returns. So under the current NAR system, your first 10 contestants have 28 points to share, your, next, your second 10 only get 10 points. That's true of the third 10 as well. Under the LSF, what I'm calling the LSF system, the first 10 contestants share 219 points, the next 10 share 1320. Uh, if, you take, if you use this LSF root system, as I've designated it, uh, the first 10 share 19. Uh, 51 uh, points are added by the next 10 contestants. So 
you have increasing returns instead of diminishing returns under both of these new systems. And also, you have a positive expected value uh, for each individual contestant to go recruit someone else. So this is your, uh, this would be your scores. Again, times your contest factor, times your weighting factor for each event. Uh, so these are your scores of a current meet. And say you recruit a new guy, he beats you all. That's great, none of your scores changed, and he got six points. Or she. Uh, say that they uh, beat everybody the first place person, so the first place person actually gets an extra point, and the new person gets five extra points, nobody else loses anything. So now you have a, a it's a, I use the word positive, what I actually say is non-negative. No, you never lose any points by recruiting a, a new competitor. Uh, even if you, and if, if, if you recruit a new contestant, you all beat them, they still get a point, and you all get extra points too. So, uh, I think that moving to some kind of system like the LSF system, where the root of the system is better, um, but I wanted to put this to a little bit of a test, so I did a small survey on Sunday uh, at NARAM, and I compared these six systems. And I put them on a log scale, which made them a mistake, uh, but I wanted to make sure that you, you know, we got this LSF original system because it goes way, 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 grows way higher. Um, I made a cap system, which I won't discuss too much. I also put a Formula One system where, so we use 10, 6, 4, 2, 1, they use 25, 18, 15, I, I have to go look up again. Um, uh, and I also made a system that's a little, that's even uh, more diminishing returns, it's just using, giving 4 points, 3 points, 2 points, 1 points. Um, so I had three, 3 systems of each type, this diminishing returns type and this non-diminishing returns type. And this was the survey form I handed out. Uh, finding number one in the study is that I am bad at designing surveys. I have no <laughs> professional training in this. Uh, many people said that the log scale was confusing. They found that um, my wording was confusing. Uh, so I should do that better next time I make a survey. Uh, and there were two questions. Uh, question one was which of these six systems do you think represents the current reward structure? Uh, and you may be surprised uh, just how many people know or don't know. And then the second question was which one do you think we should represent? Where should we be putting our incentives to compete? And so these are the results. Uh, 40 people voted. Only 40 people voted for the second question. I didn't notice until they, till I was reading their ballots because they folded them when they handed them to me. I'm missing this side. But uh, the original, so let's start with the current error system. And the blue graph is how many, is what do you think that the current error system is? So actually, uh, a number of people got this right, but more people thought it was this other system, this CAP system, which was back to slide, oh. <clears throat> which was this uh, this blue line here. So more people thought this was the current R system than the actual current R system, which is this red line. And that's kind of interesting, uh, but the more interesting question to me was what should the system be? And again, there might, be, might have been some bias in the study because if you told people what the current system was and then asked them what it should be, more people might have said, I like the current system, so let's keep it that way. So again, study design, possibly, survey design, possibly not, I promise you. But most people actually voted for this original LSF system, which has this exponential returns. If your club's going out and recruiting tons and tons of people, you should be sharing tons of points. And also, the person who's beating all those people should really be rewarded, because they did better than 30 or 40 people. If, they get, if you beat that many people, you should get a high reward. Uh, and the second place and third place uh, vote getting under the what should the system be were the other two non-diminishing return systems. The other two systems based on this leave of side of flight only. So nobody liked the current R system, or not nobody, very few people like the current R system. It was the last place. Uh, again, the study design might be a little flawed. Uh, so, how am I doing on time? Uh, you have four minutes. Great. Uh, so I added, sorry, six, six minutes. I added a little bit of uh, data so the judges are just as surprised as, <coughs> as you are. Um, I wanted to rescore a meet, a big meet, uh, using the LSF, one of the non dimension return LSF type systems. So I managed to get the data for NARAM 54 for all the events. And so this is kind of what happens. This is the current, these are the points that C division for C stream iteration multi round got. Um, so under the current R system, a lot of people get flight points of, you know, fourth place, second, third place, second place, first place, and if you disqualify, you still get zero. Uh, and you can notice that under the new system, there's now this differentiation. Now, granted, people may have flown differently if they knew that there was this system where doing your best at all costs is rewarding. But um, regardless, this system does reward like the fifth place person a lot more highly than this, the old system where they were tied with second to last. It also, I, I put this up here as a, this shows you what happens in R&D, uh, that the 
the points are actually fairly similar. You know, they're, you're starting at your, this, the, the C division, uh, because the, the, art, the placing assignments are arbitrary, if a lot of people got were tied for fifth, um, you can imagine that changing. But I wanted to put both of these as examples of uh, some meets. So how do the meet champions change? So you take all the events, you rescore all of them, uh, and the meet champion stays the same. And that's, in my mind, that's actually a good thing. I think we're pretty happy with how we assign our meet champions. I think that most people generally agree if you win a lot of the events, you're the meet champion. Uh, and so the meet champion stays the same. In this one, the third and fourth place actually flip-flopped. Um, I looked at that and I couldn't, you know, they're flip-flopped by a very small margin. Uh, whereas in here, the third place really beat fourth place by quite a bit. Actually, they beat, um, they, they really do flip-flop quite a bit. So there is some differences down here, but the meet champion stays the same. This was true in B division, C division, and even team division. So C division has kind of the most number of data points, the biggest spread. And you can see that some people are really doing well under the old system, and, might, and some people would do well under the new system. Uh, but these are, you know, fifth place, tenth place finishers, the first place finisher was the same. Uh, and section champs, uh, last year, one club, uh, had a lot of people at the contest, they did really well in a number of events, and they were the section champs under either system, uh, the meet champs. I should say, I didn't rescore the entire uh, contest year because I didn't want to rescore every single contest uh, under this system. But it, it's actually very easy with the fact that we do all, almost all use contest manager now. Um, I think this could work with program this in five minutes. So, but the section champs remain the same. And just as a final uh, note, the event balance, so this is how many, under the old system, these were the narrow events last year, this is how much of the meet champion came from each event. And you can see that there's this kind of rainbow of, yeah, each event counts a little bit, some count a lot less. This is spot landing, it has a low winning factor, it's always going to count very little. Uh, this is R&D, it counted a lot of the old system, it actually counts a little less under the new system because there aren't very many R&D entrants in, in either A, and B, a or B division last year. Um, but mostly the reason I wanted to do all this was to show you that the overall, uh, the overall contest isn't affected too much. You know, we didn't, I didn't change the scoring system and suddenly the last place person was the best place, for, was, you know, the main champion um, under this new non division return system. So, if we change to a system that has this, one of these LSF type systems, uh, which I would propose doing, uh, you know, the overall structure won't change a lot. But we might actually encourage clubs to go recruit a few more people because there's now uh, an individual uh, bonus for recruiting more people and a club bonus to recruiting more people instead of just diminishing returns bonus. So uh, the goal of this was really to come up with what should I write for an RCP. I'm not completely sure. I do think that some version of the I think this report has shown that some version of this LSF non-diminishing return system would be uh, practical and useful and encourage competition kind of in a top-down way. Uh, and they can all go read Randy Bobich's report on how to encourage it from within your, within your club. And I would hope you consider voting for it. Happy to answer questions. Uh, first thing I'd say, I, I would, I would, uh, I'm going to throw a little problem restate mm -hmm. there. You, your first conclusion is that you're bad at designing surveys. I, I would restate it as designing surveys is uh, I'm trying to find a, a suitably Disney compatible adjective for it. It's hard. <laughs> uh, it's hard. Uh, doing things, yeah, hard things are, you know, yeah, things worth doing are hard. I have no training in it. And if you live in a world where you have two poses in the IR and you're into social sciences, mm -hmm. good luck with it. Uh, interesting stuff. Um, the, I guess my question, and I'm not sure anybody can answer it, you, you, you come to the point where the conclusion being a change, a change in the scoring system would increase participation. You, you, especially in the written report, mm -hmm. you state that fairly categorically. Is, is that is that simply is that a conclusion you've drawn based on the surveys, or is there something else? Well, I mean that or it, both the sections and the individuals would be rewarded for recruiting more people. Whereas right now, it's such diminishing returns. It doesn't help. Whereas if you want to be national champion under this new system, at your regionals, it's really going to behoove you to go recruit a bunch of people to come fly the contest against you. Okay, and not just to put chump change flights up and let you beat them, because then they're never going to come back. You really want them to come to all four regionals that year and fly the contest seriously. And this is an event-by-event -event basis. 
So you can't just have them entering spot landing and then they're done. And then you'd be, you'd be the one, your one other buddy, and, um, which is what I didn't show event by event how, what, you know, where people's meet points are coming from. But if you want to be national champions after the system, it's really going to behoove you to go recruit uh, locally. And the one thing I would say is, I don't, I personally don't want to tilt it in favor of the really, really big clubs that could get 300 people to all enter spot landing. Um, I'm in one of those really, really big clubs, I still don't want to do it. Uh, that's why I think that something like the, the logarithm uh, answer, maybe with a small bonus for first place, uh, is closer to the right answer. I, I, I personally, my personal favorite was your cap del SF, but I don't have any science behind it, it's 2%. Anyway. Yeah, the, the cap del SF was that you get uh, a lot of points for the first two competitors, and after that you do start to level off. Um, still actually, yeah. Okay. And actually people preferred that just as much as they preferred the root. Method. So yeah. So maybe those are something like that is right. So your yeah, you say your concept here is more people, people bring extra points. Mm -hmm. More people you have, mm -hmm. more points they're already sharing. Sure. And I guess from my thinking about my history with your journals and things, one of the questions is, uh, and I have actually one of my answers for it, uh, is the change point system going to be sufficient? States away to say, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drive to this, and that's gonna be, that's gonna be the, the issue. Is can you bring? Well, part of the issue is can you bring people in? Can you bring people in? Yeah, you can recruit, but you've also got to, you've got to incentivize people enough to say it's worth, it's worth two states over. Five it is, yeah. And, well, we're out of two states over. It's fifty thousand miles, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, there are so certainly this is not the magic bullet. Um, this will not, in, in and of itself, solve the problem. You could do this, and we could have the same exact people at NARA next year, or the year after this passes, with the same exact number of people at all the regions. Uh, and that's where I think, um, you know, Randy Bowley's report from, I forget what NARA was, uh, he, he showed about how his club was able to recruit people from the local area. Um, Tom Lyon actually put it in an RCP several years ago, which was uh, quickly and soundly defeated, where people got bonuses for the number of miles they drove to compete. Um, <laughs> That might be what it takes, you know, because you really do want to encourage people from other regions to come to your meet. In some ways, if you have a if you have a larger regional, yeah, it means you bring in enough extra points that it's well, it's worth it. It's worth it for everybody to come in. To come to do it, then yeah, then that might incentivize people from the water. And it has to get back to, um, you know, at that point you have to also encourage people. You have to have a host hotel kind of for your regional, so that it's fun and you're all hanging out in the same place or. Um, you know, you have to all order pizza at the end of the night. It's got to be a good experience besides the Besides the points, yeah, yeah. The point, uh, as of yet, the non-accomplished points do not cash in for any uh, value at the end of the contest year. <laughs> so, um, you've got to have something else there. It's got to be fun. It's got to be a good time for everybody. I had an immediate positive feeling about the Oh, yeah. And because I could never get my mind around the narrow, not the narrow, the, the, 
current system. The current system. Yeah. Because I couldn't look at the graph and say, yeah, that's the current and, system. And if this was a multi-page... I, I didn't have any confidence in the rest of the system. Sure. And if this was a multi-page survey where you had to answer the first question and then it told you whatever you picked, this was the right one. Yeah, there's obviously way better ways to study design. And the NAR does a, stu a survey every three years that that's going to do next year. So maybe it's part of that. Maybe I try to just do it. Maybe I just get all the emails from you and send out a I got a real long way to go. Uh, the, the rule changed. At one point you said you weren't going to do one, at another point you said you were going to do one, at one point you said you are going to do one. I figured that was just maybe editing and timing. Uh -huh. <laughs> so right now, as of right now, uh, do you think it's premature to, to try and draft the rule change? It will be. Well, so we have two months. Uh, the rule changes aren't due until September 1st. So we have a little bit of time to go talk to everybody else in Aaron and figure out what we would really like. Um, so I'm not going to poke at this too much, but I, I am going to give you a, a long-winded uh, critique on uh -huh. and, and the, the steps that you want to go through in order to get buy-in and, and, and Sure, yeah, and that, it's got to be buy-in. Yeah, you yeah. don't have it. It probably will take more than two months. Yep. <laughs> no, and this is, and people have tried to do similar things by changing the weighting factors. In, as long as I've been paying attention to RCP systems since NARM 35 or whatever, when I first joined the NAR 20 years ago, I've never seen an RCP changing a weighting factor get voted in. And that might, I, I might be, my memory is not perfect, but <coughs> messing with this system, the NAR is very against it. Okay. Okay. Well, let's, uh, I think we can take two from the audience before we, before we press. Okay, okay. three, but if your hand's not up, you're, 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 you're out of luck. <laughs> All right, Jay Wolf and John. That Good way. concept, I like it. Sorry for the phone interruption, Doctor, but that phone call was Randy Bodeway, and he has a question. Okay, <laughs> awesome. This is a question he's going to answer. Yeah. <laughs> Will this eliminate the need to make a distinction between section meets, local meets, regionals, and nationals? Is that be kind of built into the system? When Bob Parks and I talked about this um, originally, that was one of the things that we can just get rid of that little thing. Yeah, you, you could. You could get rid of, yeah, so right now we have this distinction of multipliers for different size meets, and we could potentially get rid of it. So yeah, good question, Randy and Jay. <laughs> Chris, oh no, you had, didn't have your head up earlier. It's Wolf's turn. Oh, yeah, I assume from your enthusiasm that um, the LSF is enjoying like uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, high-level participation, and they're really growing their their uh, meets, and this is really good for them. My concern with a system like this is that you're just going to get all of us to just dance to a new tune. My experience is that it's not like, you know, there's going to be more points available, and then they'll be like, yeah, sign me up! You yeah, know? so that, that's why I did the rescoring of last year's NARM. Yeah. Last year's NARM, the meet champions didn't change, the second champs didn't change. So it's not that we're all going to hopefully be it is going to be a bit of a new tune, but the, it, there will also be this extra incentive to go recruit people. people. And the others, have, I have no idea, but I don't think they're going to But people in, within our community are necessarily, you're not going to attract people just by saying there's points available. Because my experience is that people. QA, not discussion. We are behind on time. Oh, sorry. All right. John, real quick, and then I think we're done. Um, yeah, it, I, I, would, I think doing it on the survey is great, but what I'd really love to see is a scientific survey of people on the fringe who might get into competition. You know those people that you're trying to get to, to join? Uh, I did a regional where we got, I think we got the, the 21. Uh, that was after, but you might have had the 19 or whatever. Yeah, so, it, was yeah, 20, yeah. it was pretty hot. Uh, and, and so I, I know the experience of trying to get these people to, to, to join, and part of that's complexity. I'm, I'm concerned this may add to that, but that's what I'd love well, to see. Well, they never this anyway, because it's all in contest manager, and the, you know, the CD does that. Uh, they get home. Fair yeah. enough, but it, those are the people I love to survey, well, in addition to this. I would say, yes, yeah, so this survey is on Aaron, so obviously there's a huge bias. And Chris did his, did have his, okay, so Chris. Chris. And, and we're um, closing it off with Chris. Maybe I misunderstood, so just shut me down if I totally misunderstood this, but it sounds to me like you are taking points from people who don't recruit, because if I have 10 points and you have 12 points, and I recruit and gain 3 points, I just took a point from you, because now I beat you. So what happens to sectors who don't have enough members to recruit? They can't recruit, or they're independent flyers who just fly for themselves. You're basically making recruiting now a requirement to compete. Yeah. If you want to be a national champion, you're going to have to go out and either find people in your section and convince them that the contests are fun, or 
help. You know, that if you want to be the national champion, it will now be you're not just good at rock tree, you're good at help. You're but good at you just players. said that the only places it does not affect is national and section champions. No, yeah, but under the current system, yeah, you change all the scoring and it's the same. So it changes for everybody who's not running for national champions. Okay, again, Q and A, not discussion. Thank you, Ryan. Yep. Sorry.